it's one thing to set a district goal, but it's another thing to find out how teachers feel about that goal having been set. So I tried to survey the 10 teachers in, at grade six um, whose data I had been looking at. And I asked them the following questions. The district has set growth goals for the past five years. For two years, teachers were asked to have at least 50% of the students in their classes make their own growth goals from fall to spring, and then teachers were asked to have at least 55% of the students make their growth goals. The percentage of students making their own typical growth goals from fall to spring has gotten higher from year to year for many teachers. To what do you attribute this progressively higher percentage? I gave them a multiple choice. Um, they had uh, the option of nine different question, uh, answers, and the teacher responses showed that the most frequent answers were, there is a district growth goal that I am trying to meet, and I have become more familiar with what is tested and teach it in my classroom. Another question that was asked was, have there been any negative results due to the district setting growth goals, and if so, what are they? And teachers spoke a bit about how their students responded when their growth goals had not been met. Some students might only miss their growth goal by a point or two, and yet they still felt that they had not done as well as they might have. And teachers talked quite a bit about the fact that students might be disappointed, but they also talked about what they did to help students feel that this was one score at one point in time and that it was not the end of the world, that the next time they set that goal, they might be able to do better. So the teachers did not seem to think in the overall that there were negative effects um, because of the fact that that growth goal had been set.